what I'm about to say. Ignorant people, anybody ignorant, you know, can definitely construe as, you know, me being 100% arrogant. Um, but you know what? You make the mistake of, if you actually think I give a fuck at this point, that I'm viewed as quote-unquote arrogant. I've worked a lot of regular jobs. And certain women in those quote-unquote regular jobs hated my guts, okay? I have been hated because of this body. Um, not so much, of course, when I was heavy, but when I was what I am now, only 12 years younger, to 15 years younger, and then, oh yeah, I was hated. They didn't even, they could barely, some of those women could barely disguise their hatred, okay? Um... And that's why I've always said, I've stressed it, I've repeatedly stressed it out here in real life, whatever. I've never fit in or belonged anywhere. I tried and tried and tried to get that golden, you know, to, I reached for the stars and I never, I would never manage to grasp a single one of them, okay? Um, but I also, I don't fit in at all into the real world, okay? I'm smart enough to. I've done regular jobs, computer jobs, whatnot. Um, but I just have never fit in. Never. Ever, ever. You understand that that in and of itself can cause someone to commit suicide? If you just feel like you do not belong on this fucking planet? I know a lot of times gay people feel that way. They're, you know, ostracized and condemned for what they say they can't help. Who am I to say that they're lying, you know? Who the fuck am I? Nothing. Um, I don't fit in. Never have. Never will. I can't have the fame and the whatnot and whatever and then I can't you know what so I, you think I'm sorry that I was finally you know Marion singing her, her hallelujah I was finally diagnosed as mentally ill you think I'm quote unquote unhappy that now that you know what my family believed anyway is is now there's proof of it I don't fit in at least now you know I'm, I'm, if I do work, it'll be on a volunteer basis, and I won't have to deal with that fucking whatever that I've had to deal with in the past. Those women who were jealous of me, hated me for how I looked, pretty much because of the body, you know? I mean, if, I'm talking about when I was thin, not when I was heavy, but the body that, that men in the past, and men now, on YouTube, on dating websites, you know, your body's unbelievable, it's so hot, it's unreal, it's, it's, it's just, a, you know, anything you imagine to be, anything you could think of. Well, you put that into everyday job, computer job, or, or anything like that, a desk job, or this, or that, and I'm going to be hated. Pretty much, because on top of that, I'm just, I don't fit in, you know. I don't know how to just, you know, relax and gossip and, and whatnot. And when I worked, I was just, like, obsessive about it, you know. Wanted to please and wanted to do a good job and, you know, and just everything. Um, so I was very, very serious whenever I worked. I took seriously when I had fast food jobs, when I went to college and I had to help put myself through school. Because Daddy and his girlfriend didn't give me a penny, okay? And then when they got married, you know, now the two incomes that, you know, that there was only one income, even though there were two, there was only one when, when financial aid was looking at Laura's and determining whether she could go to school, you know? Um, 
And then when they married, Financial said, sorry, Laura, so I had to drop out for eight months and work in a deli for eight months. I was telling the guy at Stop and Shop last week, because um, he was telling me the trick of, of how they put the... I kind of knew it in the back of my head anyway, just my common sense. They put the newer stuff in the back, because most people are not going to reach the back, like the fruit or whatever, or the basket. They're going to put it in the back. And I said, yeah, I worked in a deli, and and um, I was saying, you know, like 20 years ago or something, and I know that they put out the, the I always got my stuff sliced thin, because I know that they used the older meat, even sometimes from the day before, and, you know, at least they did that, and, and that was when I was 20, I'm sorry, I was 19, um, No matter what job I was in, I always busted my ass. I worked at fast food places. I worked at Racks when I was in college. Um, they called me the sex symbol at Racks. Um, I wasn't thin when I was in college, by the way, but I wasn't 230 pounds either. I was like 180, 185, you know, something. Sometimes less, but I hadn't done the, the extra the weightlifting yet either, so I would look heavier at then at 180 or 175 or whatever than I would look once I lifted weights and whatnot. Mm. That's just how that works. When I lost, I was working at Friendly's, and when I lost only 16 pounds of people there, who, by the way, the woman hated my guts and Gail. Um, I worked so hard at every job I worked at, no matter what kind of job it was, I busted my ass working, okay? But not every woman on the planet, you know, very few have my kind of body. Hourglass is very rare anyway, and then you throw in just the whatever, the muscle tone and the... You know, I've experienced women being so hateful and catty and jealous and whatnot. I'm so grateful for my hot as shit black shelter friend who's not in the shelter anymore. You know, thankfully so. Just like, I'm not. She's not like that. She's not. And I know that she likes me. And when I'm with her, I, I kind of blossom because she's hot as shit and she doesn't take any shit from anybody and she's confident and she won't let anybody walk all over us even when we're walking down the street. Last time I was laughing my ass off at some of the funny shit that I had my sunglasses on and some idiot outside the store just had to make a comment, your friend's high. And my friend goes, she wouldn't let him say that. She's like, she's like, she doesn't even do drugs. She's like, she's, well, you don't know what you're talking about, whatever. And then he's like, and he goes, you hate white people. And and she's like, look at her. She's she's just an asshole, but she won't let him get away with it. Another time I was taking too long in line because there was two clocks. I was choosing round clocks, whatever. It doesn't really matter why I was taking too long in line. Somebody was huffing in the back of me. Back of, and, and my friend wouldn't put up with that either. She did not put up with anything. So, anyway. So I'm not trying to say all women are like that. I'm just saying a lot of women are. And especially when I work at a regular computer job, you know. So I'm sorry, men and women want me to be stupid. They want to believe that I'm stupid, you know. It's, it's easier for them to just think I'm stupid. Um, but anyway, when I work at regular computer jobs, as I've done, you know, I... I I, I worked very, very hard, and, you know, I, but in the end, I was always just different, apart from people, you know, and that's because of my background, and just everything, you know. I don't even feel real half the time. 
like I wrote on the comments of these guys, these new fans of mine who are praising me to high heavens. It's very flattering. Um, can't get enough of it considering I was in an abusive, mostly psychologically, and it never hit me. He nearly killed me in 11 for 8, as you know, if you followed me. Um, but he, up until then, he'd never laid a hand on me. It was all psychological, just like my father never laid a hand on me. It was all psychological. And Doll knew all about what my dad had done. By the way. When Doll's mom was my friend, she even say, would say to me, you're treating her just like her father did, Donald. Lay off, you know. And not like her father. Oh, yeah, you're exactly like him, Donald. Um, of course, now I can't hear enough of being praised and you're so hot and whatever, you know. Obviously, I much prefer when people praise my writing talents, but that doesn't really happen as often as the quote-unquote the body gets praised, okay? So I'll take anything I can get. Um, but yeah, they were just saying that, and then you know, I don't even... I don't even feel real half the time. Went through too much trauma in too short a period of time and I had to deny what was happening for the most part because if I really accepted what was happening, just like if I accepted my absolutely horrible, lonely existence in high school, you know, I would kill myself, you know? Denying reality sometimes is a good thing if it, if it helps you to cope, you know? Um, anyway, if you're one of my new fans or even one of my old fans watching this, I do appreciate the compliments. Donald and his mom and their verbal psychological torments, my, one of my other shelter friends, I didn't really stay friends with her, she was, but, um, should we still email time to time, but, because she had experienced it herself in her own life. She knows what she's talking about. She's like, you know, Donald's mom's like a sadist. She's like, you're not going to explain. I know, I know, I know, Fanny, just name or whatever. But it makes no sense if you tell me to be ready at a certain time. And I'm definitely going to be ready at that certain time. Let's say 7 a.m. Because you're doing me a favor on your errands and going to drop me off somewhere. Then you can't get mad at me because it's quarter of seven and you tell me I'm ready to, you say to me, I'm ready to leave now and I'm not ready. If you tell me 6.36, whatever, whatever you tell me time, I'll be ready. But you can't expect me to be ready earlier and then be mad when I'm not. That's the kind of shit Donald's mom would pull all the time with me. And then she'd want to be my best buddy and go out to the bar or whatever with me and, and you know. That's the kind of shit she would pull. Similar stuff, you know. I'm not ready at quarter of seven, and I, I try to be brief. I rationally, like, you told me to be, I had to be, to be ready by seven, and you can't. And then she'd get all huffy, and, you know. That's like one example. I gave my friends so many examples, though. My enemies are like, oh, you badmouth them, and they were giving you a free place to stay. I don't care. In the end, I almost died. I had never blacked out in my life, and I was wandering around the city. That city blacked out. Wandering around shit-faced in Hollywood. You know, not quite blacked out, but taking buses at 3 and 4 in the morning all by myself. I shouldn't be alive right now, okay? I shouldn't be alive. Donald and his mom, yeah, they gave me a free place to stay. That didn't mean that that they had a right to use me as their doormat. I'm glad. I don't like, you know, everyone, whatever, you know. I don't like it being official now that I'm mentally ill. But being mentally ill, as I wrote years ago on Yahoo Answers, it doesn't negate, it doesn't change, it doesn't negate my talent or my intelligence or even my looks for that matter, okay? It doesn't negate any of it. Um, even though people would like to think that it does, or certain people would like it to, it doesn't. Um, and it gives me freedom, you know?
freedom to heal. People at the Social Security office and people that I talked to and professionals and shelters and counselors and whatnot, everything that I did for those six and a half months I was in that shelter, dot all my eyes, crossed all my teeth, they determined, they saw the trauma that I experienced. And they, you know, and I got what Social Security felt I deserved, which was nearly $17,000 in back pay and $1,000 a month, okay? Why do you think I got all that money, though? I wouldn't have had it worked. Social Security comes from when you worked. I busted my ass working for so many years, so many years, full-time, even more than full-time, okay? I worked so many different jobs. I'm smart. I just have problems dealing with this life bottom line. That's how it is for most mentally ill people, quote unquote mentally ill people, that they can't deal with life. In any way, you know, in its various aspects. And but I'm never going to know why. Jonathan's mom treated me. Particularly her. She killed me. I expected him to treat me like shit. It was the price I had to pay for living there and not being in the shelter and be, being able to be with my own mom, you know. But when she started turning on me, that's when I lost it. That's when I was like, this life, I just, I started wondering, I blacked out. Didn't care. Didn't care. Anything. I just wanted to fucking die. should have died and yet here I am. I don't understand it. Here I still am. Not only here I still am, but I got my body back. I got my body back. The body that gives me wanted attention, of course, and then much more unwanted attention. But, you know, what are you going to do? It's like I used to say, even when I was heavy, I stood out. You stand nearly five foot ten in bare feet, five nine and a half in bare feet, and you're in a big voluptuous girl. You're gonna stand out whether you weigh 125 pounds or 300 pounds, okay? I'd rather stand out and have a really sexy hot body than stand out and, and be, you know, really hefty. I went to this thing at the mall in California and it was some kind of rap concert or something held outside the Foxwoods Mall, whatever it was. I didn't forget the name of the mall, but they changed the name anyway, but a mall in Culver City. And anyway, I'm tall, and this big black woman who was even taller than me, she had a really pretty face. She was standing beside me, but she was big. I mean, big as in she could break your neck big or whatever. And I'm looking at her, and I'm thinking, I could be you, and you could be me. I could be that big, and this tall, and nobody would even dare mess with me. They'd be afraid of me. And you could have my skinny body, and you know. That's what life is. And I wasn't even that skinny then, not like I am now. But I was still a hell of a lot skinnier than she was. You know, she could lose the weight, and she'd be fucking hot, okay? She'd be smoking. It was the same with my friend Maritza, who worked with me at Rax. She had a really, really pretty face, and she hated being heavy. Um, fast food place Rax, I worked at. Over when I was a kid, basically practically a kid, eight, 19, 18, and attending FSU, you know. That's how I think. Powers that be awarded me psych disability, and I'm happy. I'm happy. I definitely hope to be eventually doing much more with my life. As you already know, I want 
more fun sex and excitement in my life and that I'm going to get via dating websites and working on a volunteer basis at some point I'm sure I'll work but not no 40 hours a week or whatever in these jobs where I'm you know don't fit in and you know and have women hating me no matter how nice I am to them Capiche?